Are you a reader who's looking for books to read on Hinduism? Are you somebody who's looking for the best books to read on Hinduism? Well, if the answer to any of these questions is yes, then my friends, you've come to the right video. Hey guys, I'm Sankalpita and you're watching Book Geeks India, which is a channel where I make book related videos. If you like books, if you love reading, make sure you're subscribed to my channel, like and share my videos, turn that notification on. And guys, please do comment because you know it that I absolutely love it when you comment. In this video, I bring to you 10 books on Hinduism, 10 books that are meant for readers who want to learn about Hinduism and its many aspects. Now, before I start this video, I just want to put a disclaimer out there. Please don't hate me for saying this, but these are the books that I have not read. In fact, out of these 10 books, I have read only one book. Now, if you know me and if you have been following my channel, you know that almost all the books that I recommend, I always read them. So this is a video which is really close to my heart. I I really wanted to put a video out there on Diwali about Hinduism and I also bought most of the books that I'm going to be recommending in this video. So the books that I mentioned in this video are not solely based on my own recommendation. I've actually researched a lot, read a lot of reviews online, figured the books out myself by glancing through their pages, by glancing through their content, by glancing through their index. So I have formed a faint idea of the books that I'm going to be reading soon. Now while selecting all these books, I wanted to make sure that the content uh, which each of these books talks about is not repetitive so i picked up books that talk about different aspects of hinduism different uh, interpretations of hinduism and just different things about hinduism and now because i have 10 books to talk to you about let's just get on with the video the first book that i would recommend to you is this one the hindu history by ak majumdar and let me tell you one thing, this is actually the thickest book that will feature in this video. Now this is a book that presents to you the history of Hindus, the history of Hinduism and also the history of Indian nation. Now this book was written in the early 20th century and that's the reason it also features a very controversial theory which is the Aryan invasion theory. I know it's a very controversial theory, there are people who believe it's the truth and there are people who believe that it was just concocted by the British to influence Indians in a submissive way. So this book talks to us about the history of Hindus, Hinduism and the Indian nation right from 3000 BC and right until 1200 AD. It goes up to the advent of foreign rule in India and that is where it stops. And as you can see, it's a very detailed book and the author helps us understand how major events in the history of kingdoms and dynasties have influenced the culture and Hindu religion. The second book that I would recommend to you is What is Hinduism? A Guide for the Global Mind by David Frawley. Now this is a book that I don't own a copy of yet but I will soon buy it. So this book provides a very provocative, engaging and detailed analysis of the oldest religion and spiritual tradition of the world. It also tells us how despite its pluralism and also universality, Hinduism is one of the most misunderstood religions of all times. Now this book is written keeping in mind not the Indian citizen but the global one and it has this extensive set of questions and answers that covers almost all significant issues, that covers almost all significant topics that one can come across about Hinduism. Now what the author says is that by reading this book, Hindus will be clear about their roots, about their culture and also they'll be able to communicate more effectively about their origin, about their religion. The next book that I would recommend to you is this one, The Essentials of Hinduism by Swami Bhaskaranda. So this book is published by Sri Ramakrishna Math. And what I like about this book is that it is a powerhouse of information in just 200 pages. So again, this book delves into a lot of topics, but not in a very detailed manner. It gives you everything in a nutshell. So we have topics like our history, our ancestors, our holy books, including all of them, like Vedas, Upanishads, Smritis, Puranas, Epics, and Samhitas. We also have a lot of chapters that talk about the daily aspects of being a Hindu, the relevant themes of being a Hindu. So we have very interesting chapters like the Hindu marriage, 
like uh, food and Hinduism, like why the cow is considered holy. Like the spiritual path of Hinduism, the four yogas of Hinduism, uh, we have chapters about temples, sacred symbols and mantras. So like I told you guys, this book is a powerhouse of information about Hinduism and that too in just 200 pages. The next book that I would recommend to you is this one, Hindu Rites and Rituals by K.V. Singh. Now this is a book that I browsed on Amazon and I was really fascinated by it and it's a really good book. It's a very light read for somebody who is a beginner. I think this book is a very good idea to go and read if you're looking for basic level information before you delve into the deeper aspects of your religion. So what this book talks about is that in our daily life, we follow a lot of rituals, we follow a lot of customs, but do we really know the meaning of them? Do we really recognize the significance of them and the reason why we do it? This book is an answer to all those questions that you might have about our customs and traditions and our rituals. And as you can see here, this book also has a lot of illustrations, which makes it pretty interesting to read. So some of the questions that this book attempts to answer are like this. Why is the Tulsi considered sacred? Why are we discouraged from sleeping towards the south direction? Why do we join our hands in a Namaste? What is the significance of Namaste? Why do we light a lamp before beginning a ritual? Why do we chant Shanti three times after concluding any ritual? And why do we observe fasts? So these are some of the questions that this book attempts to answer. Now let me tell you one thing, this book is not an academic read. So whatever it tells you in the book is not backed by scientific evidence, which is kind of difficult also to obtain. It just gives you the reason why certain things are done in a certain way. And like I told you, it's a good book for beginners, but for somebody who already has an idea and who's already read a lot of books about these things, I think you can move on to some difficult reads. The next book that I would recommend to you guys is this one, Amazing Secrets of Hinduism, Hindu Culture and Incredible India by Ed Vishwanathan or E.D. Vishwanathan. Now this again is a book that is meant for beginners because it has these very small bite-sized chapters that talk about a lot of topics. So I'll just show you once. So as you can see, these are single page chapters that talk about, that each talk about a single topic in hand. So we have a lot of questions that the book answers and it talks about a huge variety of topics in just under 200 pages. So that is something that I really like about this book. Now, like it's mentioned in the blog, this book talks to us about certain questions that skeptical Hindus would ask themselves or skeptical people would ask Hindus. For example, questions like, why do we worship idols? Why do we worship so many gods? What is the Hindu concept of God? And why do we consider that Hinduism is great? So these are some of the questions that the book answers. And like I told you, it also has a lot of other things that would give you a general idea of Hinduism. And uh, this is again a book for beginner level readers. The next book that I want to mention here is a book that is very academic and very historical in nature. And this is the only book that I have read in this list of 10 books that I'm recommending. So this is The Lost River on the Trail of Saraswati by Michael Danino. The reason I include this book here is that Saraswati is considered to be the cradle, the birthplace of Hindu civilization, the Indus Valley civilization, which is essentially Hindu civilization. The worship of the river Saraswati, the worship of river goddess is as old as the Rig Veda, which technically is one of the oldest scriptures of the world. Now this book uses modern day methods and scientific methods to prove the existence of river Saraswati, to prove that there was a river called the river Saraswati and there was a civilization which it supported and that is the basis of our very religion. I hope you understand where I'm coming from. By reading this book, by understanding what it says, you're trying to convert Hindu mythology, which is the term I don't like and which is the term which is used generally, into Hindu history. So this very book proves the basis of Hindu history. It makes sure that our mythology is not just mythology, but scientifically proven history. What I also like about this book is that it gives you a very different side of the Aryan invasion theory. It says that the theory did not exist and it does so with proofs. So what the author tries to prove here is that our ancestors did not come from Central Asia. In fact, they were indigenous people who were born in India and who were raised in India. It also gives you certain proofs that connect the ancient religion practiced uh, in those days with the religion, with the Hinduism that we know today. So it gives you a connecting link between the Hinduism 
of that era thousands of years ago to the current day hinduism and like i told you it elevates our mythology to history which is something that we all desperately need the next book that i recommend is a very different read and i have started reading it also so this book is called hinduism and nature by nandita krishna in an age where conservation of our environment is of utmost importance for our survival we need to look back at how hinduism treats nature we need to go back to our ancient wisdom we need to understand how hinduism treats nature how hinduism worships nature be it trees be it plants be it forests and jungles and gardens be it sacred groves or be it mountains or the rivers we have always been in tune with nature we have always worship nature so this book connects our beautiful religion of hinduism by connecting it with nature and it appreciates the way hinduism looks at nature as a mother as a goddess as a provider some other very interesting things that this book talks about is uh, children of lord pashupati which is a chapter in the book and also a board of the gods which is again a very very interesting topic so like i told you guys i've started reading this book and uh, it's a wonderful read so far The next book is again a book that I don't have a copy of but I love the author's writing and uh, I think I appreciate the way he writes the way he understands the way he portrays everything so this is being hindu by hindol sen gupta now this book is different from all the books that I've mentioned in the video so far in the sense that this book talks about the author's personal journey of discovering hinduism of becoming a follower of understanding his faith and becoming something who's deeply influenced by his religion and if you look at the blurb the first three statements that are mentioned are 1 million followers 33 million god and you how do you connect these three what is your understanding of the concept of being a hindu what does hinduism or being a hindu mean to you so this is a very interesting book again and i really want to read it and if you look at the cover it is also very very interesting The next book that I would recommend to you is this one. I have it on my Kindle. So this is Vedic Physics: Scientific Origin of Hinduism by Raja Ram Mohan Roy. So in this book, the author talks to us about the oldest scripture of Hinduism, which is the Rig Veda. So the author tells us that how Rig Veda, despite of being so vast in its content, is always ill understood, is always badly translated, poorly translated. So much so that it has become one of the most misunderstood books of all times. And he also tells us that despite so many academic searches the purpose and the true meaning of rigveda kind of remains obscure so what raja ramohan roy says is that our vedas have always been lauded as containing the secrets of cosmogenesis but in this book he tells us he proves to us that how this is true by not just a yogic vision but by also a scientific vision scientific vision in the sense that it has been proven by latest insights into modern physics the author presents a new framework of understanding the rigveda hymns and interpreting from the point of view of physics and drawing parallels between the recent theories of the nature of universe Finally guys the last book that I'm going to recommend in this video is this one Am I a Hindu the Hinduism primer by Ed Vishwanathan I've already mentioned a book by the same author and this is the second book that I'm mentioning by him This is a book written for confused Hindus for Hindus that are not very sure about their roots about their ancient civilization about their culture about their beliefs So this is like an introduction to Hinduism for somebody who's eager to learn who's eager to understand and what makes this book different is the fact that it is written as a conversation which happens between this person the author and his american born son so this american born son wants to understand the family's religion and understand his roots and how he does that by the way of this dialogue that happens between the father and the son and uh, another thing that this book mentions is that how hinduism engages with western culture and western civilization and also science so this is a book that kind of bridges the understanding between uh, western culture civilization and how hinduism engages with it and this will be a really good read for not just people who are hindus and born out of india but also people who are looking for a very non technical introduction to our religion So that's it from me in this video guys these are the 10 books that i recommended to you in this video and like i told you i did a lot of research about all these books about these authors and as you must have already understood this video has books for beginners this video has books for voracious readers and people 
uh, readers who are somewhere in between. So these books talk about Hinduism in a different way. They approach Hinduism from different point of views. They talk about the different aspects of it and uh, that's the reason I recommend them to you. And like I promised you guys, I will soon start reading them. I've already read this one which is a very extensive read and it took me a lot of time in fact months to read it because it's it's very empirical and it's very scientific so i will start reading all these books that i have recommended in this video but uh, i will do so in a very slow way in a slow manner because i want to really absorb and understand all the books that i have mentioned here if you think i have missed out a crucial book in this list then please let me know in the comments down below i would love to check them out i would love to get my hands on them and read them and thank you so much for the patience i want to wish you guys a very happy diwali stay safe stay happy and have a wonderful diwali and i will see you in another video pretty soon until then bye